Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah and this is Analog Resurgence and today we're going to be looking at 110 film in a little segment that I like to call, Can You Shoot That? <laughs> 110 film! What is it? Well, in the 1970s, when film was king, a lot of people were complaining about how difficult it was to load 35mm rolls into cameras. What with all that complicated winding and threading and canister loading and everything, yeah. So Kodak decided that they would try and introduce a variety of somewhat easier to use films. I mean, Super 8 plastic cartridges were already incredibly easy to use, so why not try a similar system for photography? So one of the formats that they created was called 110 film. 110 film comes in these plastic cartridges that are incredibly small and easy to load by just dropping them into your camera. 110 film is actually the same size as 16 millimeter motion picture film, but it only has one sprocket for each frame. Typically the types of cameras that took these kinds of films were simple point and shoot cameras with fixed functions like this Kodak Instamatic or this Helena Vision. But the appeal is that they were so incredibly small and easy to load, all you had to do was just pop the plastic cartridge into the back and away you went. Now 110 film did have some popularity based on how easy it was to use and how small the cameras were in comparison to larger 35mm SLRs, but of course the quality paled in comparison to that of 35mm and especially medium format 120. The film and the cameras were actually widely distributed by Kodak and Fuji for decades until about the mid 2000s when they both dropped the format because there were just not enough people still shooting it. So. Can you shoot 110 film today? The answer is yes. Yes, you can. Today, 110 film can be purchased from both Lomography and the Film Photography Project's online stores in a small variety of formats. And 110 cameras typically show up pretty cheap online and in thrift stores because, well, it's just not that popular. However, because the format is so small, you typically end up with lower quality prints and digital scans and frequently labs will charge an extra fee because it's such an uncommon format. But of course, never be afraid to play around or experiment with lesser known formats if you want to. Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribe for more analog content every week, from history to overviews to different camera explanations and a little bit more on more obscure formats like 110 film. See you guys soon.